In today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top five favorite eyeshadow palettes of this past year, 2022. I'm also going to have a few honorable mentions that I want to throw in there, but I'm going to be focusing mainly on my top five most favorite palettes, the ones that really make me happy that I'm excited to use every time. So if you'd like to see my top palettes of the year, just keep on watching. Before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to consider subscribing. I love to do content on lots of high-end, luxury, and indie makeup. And I like to do a combination of reviewing new makeup, demoing products, and also going back into my collection and playing with older makeup that I have. So if all of that sounds good to you, I would love for you to subscribe. So my top five palettes, I'm gonna be presenting these in no particular order. I have Freddie here to help out today. Um, I, I didn't want to rank these because I feel like each one is maybe the best for a certain situation or a certain mood, so I didn't feel like ranking them would really make sense. I also just wanted to mention that for my favorites of 2022, in previous years I've just done one big video where I talk about all my makeup favorites in one video. This year I wanted to separate it out a little bit into categories. I haven't fully decided on how I'm going to do it, but I'm focusing on eyeshadow palettes in this one. I also want to talk about single eyeshadows as a category. And then of course I want to talk about, you know, cheek products, complexion products, and lips as well. So there'll be a few videos in this series of 2022 favorites. And I noticed after having chosen my top five palettes of this year, that most of them were released in the latter part of this year. So I just wanted to mention that, but I feel like a lot of brands put a lot of effort into their holiday releases, their end of year releases that we don't necessarily see in the earlier part of the year. But it's possible also that my choices here have been influenced a little bit by the actual season that we're in right now in winter. But overall, I do still feel like these really are my top palettes of the year. I think they're just the best palettes and they're the ones that I feel the most excited about. So let's get started. First off, I wanted to talk about the Lisa Eldridge Sorcery Palette. So these just came out about a month ago or so, and this to me is definitely the most special palette in her collection of five palettes that she brought out. Every single one of these shades performs really wonderfully, and I just love the way that all of these shadows combine. I love that we have a lot of different textures to work with here. We have a seamless matte in this teal green here. We have a couple of metallics that are a bit more dimensional and kind of sparkling. We have a satin metallic as well. I love this pop of blue actually in this palette. Blue is a shade in eyeshadow that I have typically stayed away from for the most part. But ever since incorporating this blue into a look with this palette, I've really been a lot more into blue and just feeling more confident about playing with blue on the eyes. So I really appreciate this palette for that as well, for the blue and for the inspiration that it's given me with other blue eyeshadows that I already had. And we have another satin metallic here, which is a beautiful light shade to lighten up and brighten up any look with this palette. And this incredible mercurial shade, which is beautiful, shiny, shifty duochrome. And this palette, just like pretty much all of the other top palettes that I'm going to be talking about today, I just feel like you can't go wrong. This is one that you're going to get more specific looks. They're going to be green and or blue looks. There's no getting away from that with this palette specifically, but I do love greens. And if I'm going for a more colorful look, green is always the first thing that I think of and what I feel most comfortable in. And this palette just gives very beautiful, very special looks. Next, I'm going to talk about another quite recent eyeshadow release and I haven't even had a chance to talk about this on my channel yet. This is the Odin's Eye Christmas Eve palette. So for Christmas, Odin's Eye brought out two eyeshadow palettes, this one and a Merry Christmas palette. And I bought both of them and I'm so happy I did because they're both really incredible palettes. They're just so beautiful. And this one is my favorite of the two, the Christmas Eve. It has this beautiful blend of being a little bit colorful, but a little bit muted at the same time. You can also create fairly neutral looks with this palette. And with my more recent appreciation for blue eyeshadows, I have a few options for that in here as well. Again, a beautiful mixture of mattes and metallics. And the super shiny shades that are in these Odin's Eye palettes, really all of the ones that I have, I have quite a few are some of the shiniest, most incredibly beautiful 
eyeshadows that I've ever seen. I just love putting these shadows on my eyes. I feel so inspired by this color story and like I can create both really colorful and really wearable neutral looks, but also wearable colorful looks. So I just think this is fantastic. And unfortunately, this one and the Christmas Eve palette are discontinued already. So they did their initial launch of these palettes, which sold out, and then they did what seemed to be quite a small restock and they sold out and it seems that that is it for these palettes. So I didn't even have a chance to review or demo these on my channel before they were gone completely and not available. So that was a disappointing aspect of this, but I just couldn't talk about my top palettes of the year without talking about particularly the Christmas Eve one, but just this collection as a whole. This one is the Merry Christmas, which is a little bit more colorful and more kind of traditional red and green, but there's still so much to play with in this one. You can still get slightly neutral leaning looks or at least more monochromatic looks. And it has the same beautiful mixture of mattes and textural shadows in this one. And I, I couldn't make this video without talking about these palettes. Next up is a Natasha Denona palette. This is the My Dream palette from Natasha Denona. And this came out a few months ago, so it's been around a little bit longer than the last two that I talked about, but still certainly in the latter half of the year. But this very quickly became my favorite Natasha Denona palette. I have almost all of her palettes and I have all of her midi size palettes like this one. And this one just has really captured my imagination. I've used it a ton since I have gotten it. I feel like I can do so much with this. There's a nice mixture of warmer neutrals, those kind of peachy warm brown shades with some little pops of gold, but you've also got the more neutral kind of taupey mauvey shades, and then you've got some purples to play with as well. I just feel like there's so much that you can do with this palette. I've done so many different looks with this palette, and it can take you from a very neutral, soft, light, natural look to something a lot more dramatic and smoky. And there's something about the quality of the shadows in this palette that to me is actually superior to all of her other palettes. There's just an extra creaminess to the shadows, an extra kind of sparkle and dimension to these metallics. You've got a couple of duochromes, you even have a multi-chrome in here. And the mattes just blend so beautifully and I find the colors are true in this palette as well, which is sometimes a slight issue with Natasha Denona shadows in that you don't necessarily know how they're going to translate onto the skin by looking at them in the pan. And I feel like with this one, the colors are quite straightforward. What you see is what you get. And I really appreciate that just for ease of use and being able to create the look that you envision in your mind when you're looking at this palette. So this is another of the best palettes from this year and one that will continue to get a ton of use in the coming year. The fourth palette I wanted to talk about is the Makeup by Mario Ethereal Eyes palette. This is another one that came out quite recently, but I just feel like this palette has everything I want if I'm going to be creating a neutral look and it also pairs really nicely with other palettes. So I have used this palette today. This and the next one that I'm going to be talking about are what I use to create this eyeshadow look. And I just love, again, kind of like with the My Dream, you can create very soft natural looks, but for me, there's also enough depth and smokiness to create more dramatic, more glam looks. And I love these topper shades here, particularly this one. This is the shade that I think everyone loves the most in this palette. It's a topper, but it has more of a base than the other two toppers right here. So it kind of has like a semi-transparent base. And then this incredibly gorgeous, really glimmery, glittery reflect. So I did use that shade on my eyes today. And if I'm not doing an all matte look with this palette, I pretty much always use that shade. I just can't resist using it because it's so beautiful. It gives such an incredible wet, glimmery look on the eyes. I just find this really easy to work with. The mattes are more powdery. So if you don't tap off your brush, you may find you get fallout with this. So I definitely recommend if you're picking up more product on your brush, I would say tap it off because you might have some issues there. But since I've learned that and adopted that technique, I haven't had any issues with fallout with any of these shades. And it's just my go-to palette when I don't want to think about what I'm going to do, when I'm not feeling as creative, because a lot of the time I do like to challenge myself with my eyeshadow. I like to try to incorporate different colors or go for a certain color theme in a look. A lot of the time when I'm doing my makeup, that's what I'm thinking about. It's just trying to challenge myself a little bit with my eyeshadow and do something a little bit more creative. 
but sometimes I just don't want to do that. And I think that's the case for most people. A lot of the time we just want a beautiful makeup look without having to think about it and without having to worry if it's going to turn out. And I just find every look I do with this, it turns out it's beautiful and I feel good in it. So that is something that's very valuable to have in a palette. I like again, that we have a little bit of a mix of warm and cool in this palette, lots of different textures to play with, which I think also helps if you're doing a more basic kind of color story for your eye look. It's really nice to have different textures to play around with. And the last palette I wanted to include in my top five favorite palettes of the year is a little bit strange because I've only had this for a very short time. I've only had it for about a week. So I know it's quite odd to include this as one of my top five palettes of the whole year. But this is one that although I've only had it for a short time, it's been very prominent in my mind ever since I heard about this palette. It's one that I've kind of been coveting the whole year. I've watched a lot of content about this palette because I've been so interested in it and I had very high expectations for it. And it has lived up to and actually surpassed my very high expectations. And it's this little gem right here from LH Cosmetics, which is Linda Hallberg's brand. This is the Shimmer Saga palette. So I've worn this every single day since I've gotten it. And every day I'm just mesmerized by these shadows. They're so incredibly beautiful and so incredibly versatile as well. I'm gonna swatch this for you since I've not had a chance to show this at all on my channel yet. So here are the four shades. They're all duochromes or multi-chromatic shades and they're super shimmery. It never comes across as well on camera as it does in real life, especially with these very shimmery kind of shifty, sparkly shades, but these are really something special. So there they are blended out a little bit. I think you can get a little bit of a better sense of just how shiny and dimensional and beautiful these shadows are. And there they are swatched out. These are shadows that can transform any eye look. They also look beautiful just on their own. If you don't want a lot of depth or anything on your eyes, you can just pick one or two of these shades. Just put them all over your lids and you've got this beautiful, glossy, wet look. Subtly colorful, really unique eye look, but they pair beautifully with neutrals as well as I paired it with the Ethereal Eyes palette today. I don't get any fallout with this. I've used these shades both with brushes and with my fingers. My favorite way is probably to apply with the finger in a more concentrated amount and then use a brush to blend out the edges if that makes sense for the look. You can pick up a little or a lot. So if you just want a slight topper effect, just kind of tap once or twice into the pan and tap it over your lid, or you can go in and pick up more and kind of blend it out with your finger that way. These shadows are kind of creamy feeling, incredibly soft, and it's just so valuable to me to have this tiny little quad like this with these four special shades it's really easy to pair with other palettes. It doesn't feel like a big deal to open this up and go into it. Some of my other favorite glittery, shimmery, chromatic shades are in the Pat McGrath palettes. And while I love those, they take up a lot of space. They're very big palettes. I keep mine in their special boxes. So it's just a couple of extra steps to get into those. But with this palette, it's just so easy, so compact. They perform incredibly well. They last incredibly well on the eyes. I don't have issues with these fading on my eyes at all. At least one of these shades is going to work with any eye look that I want to do, regardless of the color scheme. And it's also a great way to add interest and creativity to a more neutral look. So I can't say enough good things about this. As I said, a little bit weird that I'm including it as one of my best palettes of the year when I've only had it for such a short time. But when I was choosing my top five palettes of the year, I really wanted to go with how I actually felt about the palettes and how useful they were to me. And when I was trying to choose the fifth palette, this is the only one that made sense. None of the other palettes other than the other top four of this year make me feel like this one does. So I knew that it was the right choice to include in this video. So now that I've gone through my ultimate top five favorite palettes of the year, I did want to talk about a few honorable mentions that maybe either don't give me the same strong feelings that these other palettes do, or that I haven't used as much, but I couldn't include them in my top five because maybe they weren't as user friendly, or I know that they're not going to be those go-to type palettes, but I think they're still really special palettes from this year and I wanted to mention them. So the first one is the Hindash Monochromance palette. 
Now this I couldn't include as one of my top palettes because there are really only two of these six shades that I use, but I use them all the time. So it's these two pans right here. These are perfect neutral everyday shadows for me. I've used these two pans so much this year when I'm going for a really light or no makeup makeup look. I don't have to think about it. I know that the tones in these two pans are perfect for me. They can give a really beautiful lightly sculpted look. If I want a very light, very subtle look, I just use this pan. And if I want to add a little bit of depth, I can use this one. And the deeper side of this pan is actually dark enough to add a little bit of a subtle defining liner as well. And I also find that because these tones are so perfect for me, they also work really well like without mascara. So as a true no makeup makeup look on an everyday basis, if I am wearing a little bit of makeup, I don't really want to get into too much makeup. Those are my go-to shadows and I feel comfortable with them without mascara and without other makeup on my face as well, just for a little bit of definition on the eyes. So I definitely wanted to include that and the formula is very easy to work with too. It's incredibly light and buildable so that also makes it really useful for an everyday type look. I already talked about the Merry Christmas palette from Odin's Eye but that is also included as one of my honorable mentions of this year but I've said everything I wanted to say about that. And the other two that I wanted to bring up as honorable mentions are both Pat McGrath palettes. So none of the Pat McGrath palettes made it into my top five but two of them are in my honorable mentions one is the bridgerton 2 palette i just love this color story I've loved every look that i've created with this palette these are shades that i like to play with if i'm not going for a fully neutral look but also not a fully colorful look but there's enough to play around with here this shadow is incredible it feels like a baked shadow so it's kind of like one of the blitz astral shades and it's this incredible rose gold which is just one of my favorite eyeshadows ever and the texture on that is phenomenal. I love this chartreuse here. It has enough depth in the base of it that you could use it as a one and done or use it as a little bit of a deepening shade but it also has that beautiful green color that I love. I really enjoy this minty metallic. It just adds a little bit of interest and kind of leans into that blue category that I've been enjoying a lot more. So that one's really fun to play with. And this one here is just a really nice lightening, brightening metallic shade, a beautiful shine and finish on that one. Then these two satiny mattes are not my favorite, but I do find they work really well in this palette. They work with this color story. I personally would love to have a deep matte brown in here, probably rather than that purple, but it's also fun to just kind of get out of my comfort zone a little bit, play more with the deep purple where I would normally be using a deep brown and just see the kind of effect that that creates. And this more kind of lighter pinky cherry type shade does work really nicely, especially with this rose gold shimmer here. So I just think this is such a fun palette. I like that it's a little bit more compact, beautiful color story that really appeals to me and a lovely range of textures in here as well. And lastly, I wanted to mention the most recent Pat McGrath Mothership palette. This is the Mothership 10 Moonlit Seduction. That is what it looks like in the pan. I've done full videos on a lot of these palettes that I've talked about, so I'll try to link those below in the description box so you can see each of these in more depth if I have done a full review on them. I just love this range of colors. For me, it's a little bit more cool toned than I tend to go for, but it has inspired me to play with cool tones a little bit more. And there is enough warmth in these two shades here to balance it out. The textures are stunning in this. We have this really gorgeous special shade, which again, it has kind of a blue reflect and then this reddish base, but it's a blue that is subtle enough to be approachable, but still an incredibly stunning shade that's really going to bring a lot of interest to any look. This taupey pink is incredible. It's really high shine and dimensional, and very creamy feeling. And then we have more of kind of toppery gold here which again is super shiny and just stunning and i think it's a really fun palette to play with it's just not one that i've gravitated to using as much as my top five palettes of the year but i still think it's a very special and notable release from the year so i definitely wanted to be able to include it in this video so that's it for this video. Those are my top eyeshadow palettes of the year 2022. I would love to hear what your favorite palettes of the year have been in the comments below. Let me know if you have any other comments or questions. I always love to see those. If you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.